I'm a guy that's 26. Each day I build with bricks. I like Star Wars plays so how I'm rich boy J. Those of you who know me can definitely attest to the fact that I tend to have some controversial opinions relative to most others in the LEGO Star Wars community. Now I'd be lying if I said some of the popular opinions here haven't surprised me, like the infatuation with clone army building and clone bases in general, but in a community that can be fragmented by original trilogy lovers, prequel lovers, sequel lovers, and even fan fiction lovers, there's one opinion that seems to be safe no matter what types of fans you're around. The Republic gunship is the coolest ship ever. I don't know what it is about this thing that resonates so well with most Star Wars fans, but the amount of love I have for this vehicle is borderline unhealthy. As someone who builds LEGO Star Wars vehicles, I've always had people ask me if I would ever do my own custom version of my favorite vehicle. And I have to admit, I was always deterred by the fact that there are so many others out there who have already done one and have done it very well. I always imagined someday that I would just pick someone's design and build like 10 of them to have in my collection, Solid Brick Studio style, but I found it so hard to settle on any one particular model that I really wanted to commit to. That was until I found this design by Icarus Builds. Seeing him attempt such a narrow profile for the gunship made me instantly realize that's the kind of gunship I want in my collection. This is what ultimately inspired me to tackle my own design. So then I was off to the races, and I have to tell you, I have never so heavily emphasized accuracy, detail, maintaining correct proportions, integrating very subtle angles in a vehicle build, and all of that work has culminated into a gunship design that I am quite proud of. Right off the bat, I have to give thanks to some very awesome people and the great support system I've had in helping make this design possible, so shout out to Gooby0222, Trevor04, and all the boyos in the Discord, uh, as well as Playmation Studios for all your feedback and suggestions along the way. Let's take a look at the gunships. I'm primarily going to show off the episode two version, but we'll take a look at the other two variations to show off their specific details. I first wanna say that I am selling the PDF instructions to all of these models. They are step-by-step -step guides, similar to what you would see in an actual Lego set, and they include parts lists that you can either view or easily import to bricklink.com to purchase the parts. Check the pinned comment or the description of the video for details on how you can add one, two, or all of these models to your own collection. The first thing I wanted to highlight are the lack of studs. You'll notice that other than the windscreen here, there are zero exposed studs on this entire build. You'll notice some interesting looking patterns on the surfaces of this build that are caused by trying to maintain the studless aesthetic. And this was not an easy feat to accomplish and required me to do some crazy snot work on the surfaces uh, to keep those studs unexposed while maintaining any type of stability. I really wanted to incorporate some more of the subtle angles on the gunship uh, for some next level accuracy. You'll notice that the floor of the ship is actually tapered from the front going to the back and the main hull section is the same way. The very front of the ship towards the top is around four studs wide and it gradually widens to seven studs wide at the very back. I see so few gunships at this scale attempt this particular angling, so it was a nice challenge trying to incorporate that into this build. I can't understate how much of a challenge it was to try to incorporate all these angles into a gunship that is only four studs wide at the front. But in the end, when you can get this kind of front profile view, I thought it was totally worth it. I feel like the narrow body is a characteristic feature of the Republic gunship, uh, one that typically is not represented in the Lego sets, so this was a very crucial detail for me to implement. The section of the build that I'm easily most proud of has to be the wings, specifically the angling here up towards the top. Coming up with a design that allowed me to have the sharp angles on a wing that's only one stud thick while not having any exposed studs was easily one of the most difficult parts of this build, but I don't think I could be any happier with the results. The way all these angles in here transition to almost seamlessly uh, is extremely satisfying. I don't know what it is about this particular section of the gunship, uh, but looking at how all of this came together so well just excites me a lot. The rocket launchers also presented many design challenges as LEGO just doesn't produce a cone long enough to represent the shape here uh, that we would see on an actual public gunship. I don't think the solution that I came up with is perfect, but I do generally like the conical shape that I was able to create here. 
While we're taking a look at the rocket launchers, we can also take a look at the top of this model. We have a collection of brick built rockets at the top as well as one loaded in both rocket launchers. The back engine section is also one that I'm particularly proud of. The metallic silver and gold here really pop on this mostly white ship and these ski pieces I think represent the vents and the engines very well. Now let's jump to the front of the gunship. It was really important to me to have a smooth transition from these front curved slopes to the side panel here. The four stud wide design meant that I had to forego some of the triangular shaping here right under the cockpit on the front, but I felt that that was a worthwhile trade-off to maintain a more accurate general ship shape. There's a very subtle four degree sloping here on the side panels of the actual gunship that I attempted to recreate using these panels that uh, basically step up uh, one after the other. One cool detail is that because of the subtle angling of the entire body here, combined with the panel covering up part of this flame orange tile, I was able to give the look of one of the triangle designs that you see on the side of a gunship. I also included this gray stripe here on the side of the gunship. I feel like most people didn't really know this was here until the release of the UCS gunship. A lot of people uh, start to realize, oh hey, there's a gray stripe on the side of the gunship. And I thought that was actually uh, a worthwhile detail to add into this gunship, especially since it is mostly white. It was nice to break up a bit of that coloration here on the side. Also really like how this flame orange bracket allowed me to represent some of the paint detail on the side of the body without having to use any stickers. Now, speaking of stickers, I did include a couple here at the bottom. These are from the Stormtrooper helmet, and although they're dark blue, I think they represent the vents on the bottom of the gunship very well. The cockpit windscreen are removable and can accommodate too many figures. You'll notice that the back cockpit section incorporates a brick built dark red stripe. This is another area that was very complicated by the narrow design that I went with for this mock and it's quite surprising that this ended up working out as well as it did given how narrow the body of this ship is. The gunship includes a full troop area interior down below with space for quite a few troops. My design has studs to stand up four minifigures on the inside, but there definitely exists an ability to modify this slightly and add more studs if you just decide to incorporate more figures standing up on the inside of the troop area. That being said, if you remove these quarter circle tiles on the edges here, you can actually sit two clones at the edge of the troop area, similar to how we see them in Attack of the Clones. And I have to be honest, I love displaying clones here in this position. I spent an excruciating amount of time trying to nail down all the details on the ceiling of this gunship. So you'll notice there's this rack up top, then towards the back, we have this netting section that comes down. Back towards the front, we have whatever this thing is supposed to be. I have no idea what it does, but it's definitely there on gunships. We have an opening under this arch section that allows troops to come through here. I really do like the way the section came out because it is actually wide enough for a minifig to realistically walk through it, which was very important to me. At the very front, you'll notice we have this doorway with two lights up above. The two side doors can open and close. This is somewhat of a delicate section of the build, so you definitely just wanna maneuver these using the top half of the door right here. That's part of the design trade-off of having these arches here at the top and the bottom, as well as a completely studless surface of these doors. I use the Lego hammer piece to represent the handle on the outside of the door, which I'm really proud of because I don't think I've ever actually seen someone put a handle on a Lego gunship door. So I like the way that came out. On the inside of the door, we have a couple of rockets and I think this torch piece right here worked perfectly as one of the rockets with a wire that connects the door. Uh, I love the way that that came out. The back door does also open and close. I love this view with all the doors open, specifically because I was able to come up with a design where just these two back beams support the entirety of this heavy back half section of the gunship without any additional interior supports that aren't gonna be accurate. As much as I'd love to take credit for these bubble turrets, I simply can't. Aside from some minor changes on the inside, I'm using the bubble turret design from David Buchholz's episode two gunship. This thing is borderline perfect to me and I didn't think it was worth even trying to improve. There's a little bit of articulation on these turrets allowing you to rotate them side to side and up and down. And for my personal model, I added these green lasers coming out. And then while I'm on this topic, I do just have to give special thanks to David Buchholz. He didn't specifically reach out to me to help with his gunship. In fact, I don't even think he had any clue that I was working on it, but I absolutely looked to his model for a lot of inspiration and just 
trying to figure out what was and was not possible when designing this gunship. So uh, David, your model was a really big help with developing what I have here. I guess we can now move on to the Clone Wars version of my gunship. The major difference you'll notice here is that this one has the double closed doors and it's missing the open arch section on the front. Reconfiguring my episode two version of this gunship was so much more difficult than you would think. Like I mentioned with the episode two gunship, there is this very subtle angle here along the side of the Clone Wars gunship. And because of that missing arch and the double doors, this angle goes all the way to the back of the gunship. As such, I used more of these panels here to get that angle going halfway through the front door at least. I filled in those door gaps using these light bluish gray tiles, which I have to admit looks really cool when the doors are closed up. If we open the doors, we see a considerable amount of interior space. I use these zip line utensil pieces connected to some antennas as the overhead handle piece, and I thought that represented the actual handles very well. I've never been a huge fan of this version of the gunship, but I have to admit that I've gained a much greater appreciation for it, having converted my own design into this one. Those are pretty much the only unique things about this version. Everything else is almost an exact copy from the episode two version. Finally, we take a look at the Munalist version of the gunship. Now this is such a wild and obscure color scheme for Republic gunships, but it has gained a bit of a cult following just due to how awesome it looks. I was already a huge fan of Republic gunships when I watched that original Clone Wars series, but this scheme took the gunship to another level for me, and I am so, so happy I was able to convert my model to it. The biggest challenge with this design was including all these complex shapes in the coloration and the paint design, while still maintaining the studless and sleek nature of my gunship. The stripes were the biggest challenge in that regard. I can't even tell you how much time went into incorporating the triangular shapes in the side of the body of the gunship. The narrow design on its own presented many challenges, so adding on top of this uh, really stressed my skills as a builder. The fact that I was able to somehow incorporate these shapes while still maintaining the general form factor of my original gunship build uh, is nothing short of a miracle, honestly. Similarly, we have these stripes on the back edge of the wing, and I was extremely relieved to find that the spacing of this assembly worked out perfectly to incorporate these stripes uh, while still being snot. The front section is designed to look like a Rancor's face and mouth. I used red mostly for the exterior panels here and dark red for the inside into the turrets, as you can see is accurate if we look at some photos of this gunship. I ended up having to use a reddish brown piece here for the turrets, simply because LEGO just doesn't make this piece in dark red. But I have to say, I've spent quite some time staring at this thing and it really does not stick out at all. I also like the way I was able to incorporate the eyes and the nose into this design. Everything else on the Munalist version of the gunship is pretty much the same as my episode two version minus the bubble turrets. The actual cartoon depicts this gunship with double doors at some point, such as here in this scene. But when we're in this scene, we see the back door is open similarly to how we see them on an episode two gunship. I ultimately just decided to go with the episode two design for the troop area here for a few reasons. One, I think I just prefer having an open troop area here. And second, it doesn't really make sense to have a fully closed-in troop area with double doors and yet still have this open arch here. It's also worth mentioning that because the 1x2 curved slope bricks don't exist yet in dark blue, I did have to use some cheese slopes for the body here. Uh, there does exist the 1x4 version, which is a little bit taller, and, and that wouldn't work out with my design just because of how tall it is compared to the 1x2 version. And also that piece is extremely expensive. Lastly, I'll talk a little bit about the sturdiness of these models. Now, while they're definitely not meant to be played with, they're not play sets, uh, I definitely wouldn't say they're fragile. Once you understand the lift points of these models, and I can show here, this is kind of how you want to lift them, uh, you can definitely pick it up, give it a good look, and show it off to others. I will say that they are definitely back heavy. The bubble turrets and the second set of doors help keep the episode two and Clone Wars version steady, but the Munalist version can definitely tip over backwards depending on uh, what kind of surface you're sitting it on. That's gonna finish up the video, guys. I hope you enjoy taking a look at my new gunship builds. I don't think I've ever designed something that is so near and dear to my heart and soul. I only started working on these like a couple of months ago, but given how much I've adored the Republic gunship since adolescence, this project felt like the culmination of like 16 years of buildup. Once again, if you'd like to build any of these models, 
check out the description or the pinned comment for information on how you can get those instructions. I do also include instructions and parts lists for the stands that you see here as part of your purchase. So you can either build this Geonosis version that I have on my episode two variant, or these clean versions without the rocks that I have on the Clone Wars and Mutalist gunships. If you guys like what I do, go ahead and support the video by hitting the like button, support the channel by smashing that subscribe button, and I'll see you all very soon.